Hey everyone, welcome to Popular Cruising. I am your host Jason Leppard, here with a deck-by-deck -deck review of Royal Caribbean International's Wonder of the Seas. Originally slated for the Chinese market, the latest largest cruise ship in the world actually began sailing stateside, but some of her venues still reflect the original destination. Let's start with the ship's specifications. Wonder is a mainstream vessel with a standard lifestyle and value that is the fifth in the Oasis class, is launched in 2022. The ship measures in at 236,857 tons, with a maximum guest capacity of 6,988. That's certainly a lot of people, resulting in a bit tighter of a passenger space ratio of 33.9. As for private accommodations on board, we stayed in a balcony stateroom that was pleasantly sized with a nice amount of padded space all around the furnishings. And I am so pleased to report that there is a USB charging port and electrical outlet, and not just one, but both nightstands. The bed itself has a cushy mattress that our teddy bear friends approve of, but the new sheets were definitely rather stiff. Across the way is a handy full-length mirror, as well as a vanity desk with an abundant surface to place anything you may have brought with you, plus a lengthy sofa, equally plentiful as storage, including a closet on either side of the bed, one exclusively for hanging clothes, and the other with hanging space, shelving, and a safe. Returning to the vanity, many more outlets are available, as well as additional storage drawers and a mini-fridge. And outside, of course, is the sea view veranda itself, with ample space to easily maneuver around two chairs and a small table. Back inside, we were pleasantly surprised to see so many hooks, but they're placed unusually low. Thankfully, the bathroom has another two positioned at standard height. Here is a fine example of a compact design that does not feel compact with perfect spacing around the toilet and sink, and a rounded shower enclosure, with a radius large enough to turn around in. One larger room we were able to tour was a grand suite, with a more luxurious bathroom, complete with a tub-shower combo, and dual sink basins. Overall, the room is wider and longer, with a separate seating area to lounge in, and a bedroom to sleep in. As a reminder, if you haven't already done so, please feel free to subscribe to our channel to know when we post our latest videos. Meanwhile, this suite also has a very cool television that emerges from the ceiling. Another signature cabin on Wonder is the Ultimate Family Suite. This is the vibrant two-story one with its own slide descending from the top level down to the bottom. How cool is that? As well as massive balcony with seating for all the generations outside, plus lots of gaming space back inside. What's more, suites come with exclusive access to a ship within a ship complex, comprised of a welcoming sun deck, an area to take a dip, as well as barn lounge chairs in the sun or shade. And downstairs by a deck is the private coastal kitchen dining room and suite lounge. All of which face the stern instead of suite balconies as before to avoid any noises below. Oh, and naturally there are snacks here to enjoy throughout the day. When you're ready to book your Wonder of the Seas cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Vacations, who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get a complimentary quote, just click on the link right here, or call the number or email the address displayed below. First staying high on the ship and working our way down, activities available to everyone include the Perfect Storm trio of water slides on deck 17, encompassing a pair of racers, as well as a single one passing through thrilling translucent sections. and ending with a refreshing champagne bowl finish. New to Wonder is the newly rebranded Social 100 Teens Club, including a patio just for young adults that features a whirlpool, bar, and gaming lawn. Then on deck 16, Social 100 itself is a space with not only a well-stocked vending machine, but also plenty of room to socialize and play more games. But if that's not enough, there's also a dedicated arcade opposite the Teen Club for even more gaming. as well as a collection of table tennis. On the way to the full-size sports court for basketball, regular tennis, and more.
The ship also reprises a Flow Rider Surf Simulator. To safely practice riding the waves, as well as a zip line that stretches high above the boardwalk neighborhood below. Switching places with the sports court of other ships in the class is the Wonder Dunes mini golf course, playfully themed to all kinds of sea creatures. And right next to it is the new Wonder Playscape. where kids can climb up and slide down. And have all sorts of jungle gym fun. Then off the stern again is the Ultimate Abyss Dual Dry Slide that descends from deck 16 all the way down to deck six at the boardwalk. It's definitely a fun ride. And an easy way to get down to Johnny Rockets quickly if you're craving a milkshake. Down another deck on 15 is the Splash Away Bay Water Park for little ones, not quite ready for the perfect storm, but working their way up to it with tamer water slides and interactive water elements in the meantime. In addition, there are three main pools on Wonder of the Seas. Plus a pair of translucent plunge pools perched above. Two larger ones sit opposite each other. With Central Park and a giant movie screen in between. And waiting areas expand the cooling waters to surrounding loungers. And there's a whole other one if the first two get busy. Or if you'd rather be closer to the water slide action. Alternatively, for complete serenity, the Solarium still has one set of whirlpools kind of levered over the ship, while a bar replaces the one previously on the other side. The space is climatized in case of rainy weather, but can still get a bit steamy from the forward, terraced pools. which invite guests into its deep or shallow waters. Just below on deck 14 is the Adventure Ocean Kids facility for younger children and preteens. Spread out by age to various playrooms. Including an indoor jungle gym. craft areas, large-scale gaming floors, and its own colorful theater. Sadly, at the time of our sailing, the adjacent Royal Escape Room had not yet been built out, and was only an empty shell awaiting themed puzzles. But on the other end of the ship, the Seven Hearts card room was ready to go. Going from the upper decks down the central corridor takes guests to the ship's central park on deck 8. Still a unique outdoor courtyard with live plants and alfresco dining patios to take a stroll through. Or for those seeking more of an adrenaline rush, the ship has two rock climbing walls off the stern on deck seven. And then down again on deck six is the aforementioned boardwalk, sporting a turn of the century vibe thanks to its outdoor arcade games. And carousel, which is free to ride. It doesn't even matter if you're young or young at heart, all are welcome on the wooden horsies. And passing by Johnny Rockets and Playmakers, which we'll soon return to in the dining section of the video, 
takes us to the bottom of the ultimate abyss again, as well as a lucky climber structure for children in the shadow of the taller rock climbing walls. Or back inside, there's an area dedicated to learning about and booking shore excursions. Plus a photo studio and gallery for capturing and purchasing images on board, digitally so as not to waste any paper. Nestled in the bow is also a massive fitness center with tons of equipment from exercise bikes and weight machines to treadmills and spinners for group classes and conveniently down the stairs from the motion studio is a running track that stretches all the way around the ship which really gives you a sense for how large the ship really is it's really not that much longer than other ones, but it is certainly wider and taller. So time lapse comes in handy to illustrate the overall dimensions. Before taking a breather for a soothing look at the wake. Down a level from the gym is the Vitality at Sea Spa. which consists of a traditional salon and barbershop. As well as more down the stairs. To treatment rooms. A relaxation room. And still a lackluster thermal suite for a ship of this size with only heated tile loungers, dry sauna, steam room and experience showers. More extensive by comparison are treatment rooms for couples, and those even with private tubs. Always impressive on any Oasis-class ship though is the Royal Promenade. Taking the concept first introduced on the Voyager class and widening it to true shopping mall proportions large enough for a classic Ford Mustang, as well as parades. Among the venues surrounding the promenade are a reception area for guest services. And an next cruise office across the way for booking future voyages. And there is no shortage of retail shops along the way. Illustrative of the ship's original Chinese market, Spotlight Karaoke remains on board for those wishing to sing to their heart's content, either publicly or in private side booths. Then down on deck four is the art gallery, displaying the all too common Park West collection available to purchase at auction. Leading to Casino Royale, which is very smoky on this ship. Unfortunately to the point that fumes waft into the adjacent main dining room and stairwells leading to several decks above. Alternatively, and again originally ready for the Chinese market, there's a golden room for more private gaming in lieu of a jazz club on previous ships. And at least this one didn't reek of cigarette smoke. Speaking of dining, in the main restaurant on decks 3, 4, and 5, it's really the only venue that mirrors the ship's massive scale. While other spaces are purposefully intimate, this venue is a triple floor cavern that is undeniably grand, but can also be quite noisy. For complimentary food, classic courses like these were well prepared and flavorful.
one specialty restaurant that we've grown rather fond of is Azumi. which on this ship serves sushi in one half. And hibachi grill items in the other. The typical dinner show element is seen ashore and on board is getting rather tired. And may end up with egg on your face as it were. But the cuisine itself is still a standout especially the surf and turf option. You can even order excellent sushi rolls from the bar next door to a company. And the sesame ball dessert is a lovely sweet send-off. Back at the Royal Promenade on Deck 5, there's even a genuine Starbucks on board, where you can buy the same drinks and snacks available on land such as frappuccinos and lemon loaves. And just to the side is the Boleros Bar, reminiscent of Cuba and serving tropical drinks, while spicy Latin music plays on. For more free food options, Sorrento's has improved in my opinion. Antipasti can be plated here, And while pizzas are not the very best, they are at least decent. I particularly enjoyed the Caribbean variety, which was not too dissimilar to a Hawaiian pie, but with a tangier sauce. Meanwhile, Cask and Clipper across the way is a European-style pub, with international beers on tap, and acoustic live music in the evenings. And off from the Mustang is Cafe Promenade, if you'd prefer to pick up a free coffee and snacks versus paying at Starbucks. I also still find the Bionic Bar fascinating, where for the cost of a drink you get a very cool robotic show as well. After ordering on tablets, the Kuka arms get to work to automatically craft a cocktail. A cocktail from the future, that is. And even more unique is the Rising Tide Bar that lifts up from the Royal Promenade and slowly, or quickly via time-lapse, takes patrons from Royal Promenade to Central Park, or vice versa. The experience is a treat for sure, and it doesn't cost anything to ride. Among the other specialty restaurants on board is Royal Caribbean's Signature Chops Grill, up on Deck 8. The classic steakhouse and its leathery environs serve up dishes like the following that remain solid culinary choices to this day. On the opposite side is 150 Central Park, which is touted as being the premier dining room on board. The restaurant decor is certainly lovely, but the dishes themselves left something to be desired. Bread service is excellent, but the scallop appetizer was just okay and arrived slightly cold. While the lamb wellington was tasty, but a small portion. However, the fried cheesecake might just be the very best dessert on board. More to our liking is the trellis bar outside, as a quiet enclave among the greenery. Also serving up refreshing drinks. Or for included food at Central Park, Park Cafe is a sort of secondary buffet. For sandwiches and soups. Or even a bagel bar for breakfast.
we definitely enjoyed the super tender beef from the carving station here. Rounding out the park's eateries is Giovanni's, which is equal parts wine bar in a casual setting. and Kitchen, which was another of our favorite specialty restaurants on board. And in fact better in our opinion than Jamie's Italian on other ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet. Starting with irresistible garlic knots, and a meat and cheese platter, and continuing on to a delicious caprese salad with truffle no less. Awesome Italian stromboli. Perfectly al dente spaghetti carbonara. And a sweet equivalent of stromboli made with bananas. Leaving Central Park behind to briefly return to the boardwalk below on deck 6 is another complimentary venue in the form of the doghouse. Here you can get yummy hot dogs, as well as sausages and bratwursts, topped with traditional condiments. Less great, however, is the bland potato salad as a side. And still a popular choice among cruisers, despite the brand's waning success on land, is the friendly Johnny Rockets. On Wonder, the diner is still full scale and grills up delicious gourmet french fries. And of course, juicy hamburgers. On the other side is the Playmaker Sports Bar, which is a great place for grabbing a drink, as well as paid snack items that are well worth their cost. Such as a hearty portion of delicious pokey nachos. Or for those with more of a sweet tooth, Sugar Beach is where you can buy a wide assortment of bulk candies. or a scoop or two of premium ice cream, such as the tempting birthday cake flavor. We're also pleased to see the Lens Classic Schooner Bar repeated. Or for something healthier, the Spa's Vitality Cafe alternatively has passengers covered. Then on deck 11 and 12, having never experienced it before, I was eager to try Wonderland, appropriately on the Wonder. And it did not disappoint. The fantastical setting is populated by the mischievous Mad Hatter. And the menu is cleverly revealed by Paintbrush. The courses we sampled were very creative, and more filling than expected. This playfully titled citrus dish was incredibly refreshing, and my short rib entree was delightful. And of course desserts are just as theatrical. Acting as another secondary buffet, meanwhile, is the Solarian Bistro on Deck 15. Tucked just inside its namesake pool deck for alternative fare. And then the main Windjammer Buffet is the largest on any Royal Caribbean ship. With a massive selection. And seating that wraps all the way around the boardwalk below. Ethnic flavors are especially well prepared here. And there's even a donut bar available. Entirely new on the ship is the mason jar. Serving up southern comfort food for a surcharge for brunch or dinner. 
The side bar additionally showcases live country music and a fantastic selection of drinks. Cocktails are marvelous here. And my personal preference is the no joke, smoke and coke. And naturally, these hearty courses delightfully stuck to our ribs as well. I mean, you really can't go wrong with pimento cheese dip and saltines. And jalapeno cornbread to start. Followed by deviled eggs with fried chicken skin. And of course, a skillet of egg and sausage topped breakfast biscuits. Both side watering holes extend to not one, not two, but three lime and coconut bars. In between which is the free sprinkles soft serve station. The view bar has been much ballyhooed, but is really just like any other bar that happens to look to the side of the ship. It's fine, but nothing to write home about. More exciting, actually, is the wipeout bar at the back of the ship on deck 16, where after flow lighters, well, wipe out, can go grab a drink at the bar dedicated to their admirable attempt at surfing, where the bartenders are ever friendly. El Loco Fresh is also reprised. along with its attached cantina fresco bar. Free fare here includes burritos, tacos, and quesadillas that could certainly be more flavorful. There's a salsa bar to jazz items up a little, which I'd recommend because the innards are otherwise a little on the blander side. And last but not least for food is hooked seafood. The coastal atmosphere lends itself well to the delicious New England style seafood. We didn't have a chance to dine here on the Wonder itself, but tasty items like these are common to the ones we very much enjoyed recently on Navigator of the Seas. And as for entertainment, events like parades and live music begin back at the Royal Promenade. Where an excellent big band is often featured to the delight of passers-by. Then the music hall on levels 8 and 9 is a double-decker venue. with an awesome backdrop view to the boardwalk behind it. And up on the second floor, there's another pool table as at Playmakers to enjoy while listening to great tunes, performed by rock bands as well as talented jazz combos. There's even a fun roaming pianist on the ship that you may run into riding the elevators, which literally takes elevator music to new heights. And occasionally he plops down where a larger audience can appreciate his playful banter and tickling of the ivories. And despite its name, down in the basement here of Deck 4 is the attic, where guests can catch stand-up comedy sets. We were not able to attend even one, unfortunately, as they booked up extremely quickly. So be sure to make reservations on the app for this, as well as other shows as soon as possible. Just around the corner, Studio B has been carried over from previous ships as well. And the 365 performance taking inspiration from the seasons is another stunner. The ice skating is superb. And the creative costumes are colorful.
Technically, the show even uses wireless trackers in the outfits, so the spotlights can automatically follow the movements of the skaters. It turns out due to supply chain issues, the company was initially missing the vast majority of its props and scenery, but the performers more than made up for any absence. The Royal Theatre is once again a seriously impressive triple-decker venue, with lots of upper balcony seating, in addition to lower level seats, and the sound system packs a punch. However, unlike on previous Oasis-class ships, there are disappointingly no full-scale Broadway shows staged here. Instead, Voices is a remounted production that I saw many years ago aboard former Royal Caribbean corporate cousin Azamara, where the show shined as an intimate musical showcase of the human voice. Back on Wonder, however, the pared down show definitely does not scale back up enough to replace the likes of Grease or Hairspray. Still, the single greatest entertainment venue on board is the Aqua Theater, at the boardwalk right over the stern. And now Royal is raising the bar again, with projection mapping on the stage for cool lighting effects a la Tron. The so-called Intense show was also not entirely finished for the first sailing, but the sampler we saw was already outstanding. Taking additional cinematic cues from The Matrix and Interstellar, the presentation of time in Forbes, reverse, and slow motion is perfectly executed. And all the stunning fountain, swimming, high dive, and aerial elements really bring it all to life. Now to finish up with our Wonder of the Seas pros and cons. What we didn't care for as a pain in the aft includes the drifting of cigarette fumes from the casino well beyond into other venues and decks, the still underwhelming spa thermal suite, and especially the lack of a full Broadway production show on board. But what we very much did like that can take a bow are the spectacular aqua and ice shows, great new mason jar specialty restaurant and bar, and just the massive variety of things to do on a ship of this size. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos. Watch our other ones and visit popularcruising.com.